Hello everyone. Um, option has become one of the most important concepts uh, and also instruments in uh, finance and economics, especially uh, with the publication of uh, the option pricing model by Black and Scholes in 1973. Uh, with that publication or after the publication, um, people have been you know, applying the option concept in uh, for example, the derivative securities for hedging purposes and also for uh, trading and speculation purposes. Uh, and also, you know, in, in project finance, we have been uh, implementing the uh, option theory, option model to create a situation where uh, you can you can play with the timing or the, uh, you know, you you could create more flexibility for uh, your decision making. This is something that we, we are going to see uh, today uh, that is about the real option. So the application of option in project finance okay, uh, regarding the decision uh, and the, the, the timing that you choose to execute a, a project or a business unit, whether you want to do it now or you want to delay it uh, maybe for the next three months or uh, six months or even one year. So this is something uh, very common at the moment. And I think this concept also uh, responds to uh, like popular statement or popular belief right now that the traditional business feasibility indicators like NPV, IRR, the payback period or other uh, traditional or classical uh, feasibility indicators uh, are not accurate anymore or, or are not able to, you know, uh, answer or value the modern businesses, especially the uh, new generation startups. So this is something that we, we, need, we need to uh, uh, respond properly. So with the knowledge and uh, application of the option theory, Actually, uh, we could see it in another perspective. So the classical uh, feasibility indicators uh, actually are not, are not useless or disappearing in their function. But uh, I, think more, I think a more accurate perspective would be uh, to say that uh, the real option application uh, has been more and more dominant or has been added into the class classical or traditional uh, indicators. Okay, so uh, let's put it this way, right? If you see uh, you know, the current news, uh, current development in uh, like startups right? uh, or any kind of modern businesses, so you see that many of uh, the young startups are actually having negative incomes, right? So they are negative income firms. Uh, and uh, consequently, if you, if you see uh, like negative income firms, uh, most likely their cash flows would be negative as well. Most likely, I'm not saying all the time, but you know, most likely uh, negative cash flows. And of course, with the negative cash flows, then the uh, failure of the business would not be positive, right? So, in other words, if we are using the, if we are using the classical uh, indicators such as uh, NPV, then obviously many of the young startups are having uh, negative NPVs, right? So they are not uh, not worthwhile. Right? They are not worth it uh, to buy. However, if you see the reality, uh, many billionaires or uh, venture capitalists. Uh, other wealthy people are willing to buy the young startups at, uh, at relatively high prices and, and sometimes uh, at a price that we could not imagine. Right? You, you, can, you can name uh, the young startups uh, for the last maybe decade, like uh, Uber or uh, Grab right? or Gojek. Right? So when they started selling uh, some proportion of, of their ownership, uh, we could observe that you know many 
entrepreneurs, many uh, venture capitals were willing to buy those startups, right, or some proportion of their ownerships at uh, high prices. <clears throat> okay, so uh, seeing the fact that the uh, negative income firms and negative cash flow firms uh, are very attractive or uh, were bought by uh, many wealthy uh, organizations or wealthy individuals at high prices, uh, then again, the popular belief then comes out. Uh, the popular belief uh, essentially says that the, again, the kinds of indicators are not able to uh, do or conduct the uh, evaluation in modern times. But it, uh, again, by, uh, uh, by the completion of this discussion, I hope we, now we could understand more that actually, uh, that actually it's not you know, the uh, disappearance or dysfunction of the classical business uh, business feasibility indicators, but actually uh, the the role of the real option now is becoming more and more dominant. So again, the application of the real option in project finance, in uh, the project decision making, whether to execute it right now or to wait or something like that, is becoming uh, more central. Right? Even you know uh, it has become like a norm. Right? Like in the past. Uh, if we implement it, or we, we, we harness the option pricing theory, or real option, it was like a competitive advantage to uh, like to the valuer or to the company or to or any entity who, who use it. However, right now it's not a competitive advantage anymore because I think it's a, like just a norm. Right, we have to do it to make a, a better decision or more uh, timely or more accurate. Uh, decision. Okay, so uh, now we see the, the uh, situation. Let's take one example again, maybe like a, a Grab, okay, or Gojek. Right? If that uh, uh, when they had like negative incomes and the negative cash flows, uh, then their uh, present values, right, of of the that future cash flow would be uh, negative, of course, right. But you see that uh, again, many entrepreneurs, many uh, wealthy organizations were willing to buy them at, at you know, like sky, skyrocketing prices. That's why they have become like a, a unicorn companies. Uh, even maybe one of them has become like a decacorn company. So why, why is it so? So obviously, uh, the buyers, right, the like venture capitals or the organizations, or other other businesses uh, that bought some proportion of, the, of their ownership actually had the uh, expectation, right, long-term expectation that actually reflects the concept of the real option. Okay, so uh, if we see a, a company with a negative NPV, traditionally we'll say that we should abandon uh, the project, right? We should, we should not uh, take on the business unit because uh, uh, anyway, the, uh, NPV is negative, right? So uh, it's better not to do it, just abandon abandon it altogether. However, the real option concept uh, then uh, no, would, would affect the decision making in which uh, now some people, right? some organizations, some, uh, uh, again, the uh, wealthy people, or wealthy organizations are willing to wait for a certain period of time. For example, maybe one year, so uh, they could decide uh, to wait for one year, right? If uh, in the subsequent year, you know, the condition, uh, you know, gets better as as what they want or what they expect, then they will continue, right? So they're willing to sacrifice maybe for a certain period of time, maybe for one year or half a year or something like that, right? Uh, so if next year, uh, condition or the scenario turns out to be positive where uh, the demand source or uh, the attractiveness of its products increases, right? Then they will continue with the project. And maybe they have calculated before. And if this happens, then uh, the NPV will be turned out to be positive. Right? However, in, uh, if next year turns out to be uh, not an expected year, like the 
uh, bad condition persists or even uh, getting worse, then of course they will abandon. Oh, they will abandon the the business, right? They will abandon the project. So at least they have uh, the time to wait, right? Decision decision to wait. So uh, again, this is the again the the summary point of uh, what we are going to discuss. But the essence of again the uh, real option application would be the the timing. Okay, so we have the more flexible timing. So some people are willing to wait. Uh, but again, there is one peculiar and we could say spectacular thing that we are seeing right in the uh, again the venture capital world, in the modern startups world. Uh, that is. Uh, the willingness of many wealthy organizations and wealthy people to wait for a uh, procrastinated, for an extended uh, length of time. They couldn't imagine uh, uh, in the past that you know, uh, entrepreneurs or business people uh, were willing to wait for maybe 10 years or 15 years, but that's happening right now, right? That's taking place right now. So many, again, uh, the wealthy organizations or, or big venture capitalists are willing to wait uh, for results for more than even one decade. This, I think, something uh, that is quite, you know, quite special. Right? Uh, yeah, you can say spectacular. That differentiates this this time or this generation from previous generations. But again, the the, the uh, principle of application remains the same, right? That the with the uh, with the existence of a real option, then. We can wait, right? So we are willing to wait, or we can wait for uh, a certain period of time to see whether, you know, uh, we are going to execute or continue with the project, or we will abandon it uh, once for all after that certain period of time. Okay, so uh, we're going to see the technicalities now. Uh, this is very interesting, and again, it's very important topic. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not something uh, that could you know, give you a special advantage anymore. It's, it's something like uh, more like requirement to this generation, uh, meaning that if you do it, right, it has been has been the norm. But if you don't apply it, then uh, might, you might be at a disadvantage. Okay, so uh, let's, I'll start sharing a screen. Okay, so what is real option uh, in project finance? Again, this is the uh, you know, the ability to uh, make a decision at a more timely fashion, right? At, at the uh, appointed time that you want. So as the name suggests, option, right? You can imagine like option. Uh, op an option means what? A choice, right? A choice. So you have a choice. So obviously you have a choice. Uh, as to whether uh, you want to implement or execute the business right now, or you want to delay it, right? or you want to uh, fasten the again the execution of the project, that could happen as well. So it's, again, uh, this gives you like uh, flexibility in uh, the timing, right? The timing of executing the project. So you can uh, uh, essentially we are saying that real option uh, enables us to influence the size and risk of a business or a project's cash flows, right? Okay. So because this is an, uh, an option, uh, similar to the financial option, we can have a choice here, right? In, in the project, uh, project management or project uh, execution. It means that uh, if we delay or if you see another alternative of delaying uh, the project for six months or for 12 months, uh, we have an option, right? Whether to execute the project uh, six months from now, one year from now, or, or not, not to execute it at all, right? We could abandon it. This way it's called an option, right? An option or a choice. So this has become like a, a very important, but also attractive feature in doing business both for a financial option and also for, again, for the real option. 
Okay, so uh, again, the, now what's the, the, the main difference uh, between financial option and real option? So financial option uh, deals with or is related to the derivative securities, right? For hedging purposes. Uh, though we have another video that, that you know, discusses the uh, financial option. But here, real option means the, you know, uh, we don't have an underlying asset, but we have the uh, project, right? Project as the you know, underlying, uh, yeah, underlying thing that we uh, we we are managing or we are deciding on. Okay, so uh, again, real option is about the uh, the timing, the ability to uh, choose the time that we want. So the uh, the alternative or the choice uh, as to whether to execute the project right now or we want to do it. A little, uh, a little bit later, maybe six months or twelve months, and so forth. Okay, so uh, with the timing, uh, what can we do here? Timing. So with the available timing, uh, we could observe and also uh, take into account like growth opportunities uh, in the appointed time. Right? For example, we are waiting for one year. I will see next year uh, what is happening to like the growth rate in the market, uh, in the industry, and also in the uh, even at the country level or at the uh, regional level and so forth. So we can make the uh, decision, right? Uh, expansion, or uh, even uh, we could do it also for uh, abandonment decision. Okay, so uh, not only can we apply the real option for like uh, extension or uh, no project addition, but but we we could also use it for uh, abandonment right? or contraction analysis or contraction decision. So, for example, uh, you want to quit or you want to uh, uh, spin out a certain business unit or a project, uh, but you know you feel doubtful, right? You are not convinced about your decision, then you, you decide to see uh, what will happen like six months or uh, one year from now, or maybe two years from now. So at that time, you will see, right? Uh, again, if the, uh, if the situation, uh, if the situation improves, meaning that now the demand is, is much higher, uh, the uh, customer base is increasing significantly and, and so on, then of course you will cancel the uh, the contraction decision right the, the abandonment decision however uh, if again this uh, like stuck stagnant and also uh, uncertain circumstances persist then you want to continue or you want to really execute the uh, abandonment of that business unit right so again this creates a lot of uh, uh, possibilities and also alternative to a to a business. So we are going to see an example uh, to show you the you know, technicalities. So we will imagine a, a hypothetical situation, a hypothetical situation where, uh, let's say, we have a potential project with an initial investment of yeah, any amount, maybe 70 million, right? Initial investment of 70 million. And then uh, you might have like cost of capital. Uh, that is the required return by investors. So I have uh, uh, a specific video about uh, the cost of capital. But if you have yet to comprehend the cost of capital, uh, please feel free to watch the video on uh, the cost of capital. So this is a required return by our investors. Uh, let's assume that this is yeah ten percent right to make uh, make the calculations easier later. And then <clears throat> we have uh, uh, interest rate, uh, and let's use the basic rate. Let's say the basic rate is. Uh, maybe six percent, right? Six percent, and then for the sake of brevity, uh, we'll make 
cash flows uh like cash flows availability for uh or are estimated for three years only okay so uh, again this is just an example so uh we'll see how the example uh tells us the uh, benefit of a real option okay so uh now we try to make like uh three scenarios yeah? three scenarios so the first scenario is uh let's say a normal well, scenario normal scenario so if the normal scenario uh prevails then this is uh what will happen in our scenario so the in initial investment is 70 uh the first cash flow is let's say uh 30 uh, 30 million 30 million 30 million then for the sake of gravity we only uh, uh, we will stop at uh, year three okay uh and this is what normal um, a normal scenario with the probability of happening uh of uh 40 percent okay so what about the second scenario so initial investment of 70 uh so this is good scenario so better than than average right? so let's say this is 45 okay so this is the good scenario excellent scenario with uh, a chance of happening of 30 percent okay so then we have uh the other one would be the bad scenario uh if this happens let's let's assume it to be 15. okay so bad scenario with the probability uh, of happening of 30%. Okay, so now with the, uh, okay, so I will, So we'll see uh, in the Excel. Okay, so we have uh, three years. Okay, and we have three scenarios. Uh, the first one is normal scenario. So uh, we'll spend uh, 70, then we'll get uh, 30, yeah, 30. Okay, and uh the probability of happening is 40 percent so if the situation or the uh, circumstance is, is good or excellent we have uh, this pattern of cash flows and uh again the problem the chance of uh good scenario is 30 percent and the bad one that scenario be 15. Also with the chance of 30%. Okay, so uh, if we believe, uh, you know, again, in real life, uh, this would be the product of the product of uh, research by your internal team maybe your strategic planning team or your internal uh, accountants or some uh, other you know, departments that you assign to do it. Uh, so if you believe in, again, the, uh, the estimates that you see, we can make, uh, we can make an, a weighted average, uh, we can make a weighted average cash flows okay 
because we have the uh, you make the the three scenarios. So the weighted average, weighted average uh, cash flows would be uh, you see for uh, the initial investment. This would be seventy from the normal times its uh its chance of happening, right? Plus uh, the initial investment for the good scenario times uh, again its probability plus uh, 70 from the bad scenario times its chance of happening okay then we'll make a copy paste right the similar things would be applied to cash flows one two and three so we have to lock we have to lock the uh, ch chances okay because we are going to copy and paste so be careful we have to lock it we have to lock them right the 40%, 30%, 30%. Okay, so the reason is that uh, we want to do the uh, copy and paste. Uh, uh, well, this one or this this numbers would be fixed. They would not, uh, you know, like follow the uh, pattern of, uh, of or ordering, right? So we have to lock them before we make a copy and paste. Okay. Okay, so we uh, find out that the weighted average cash flows are uh, minus 70 and then 30 each for the next three years. Okay, so these are the weighted average cash flows. So now uh, let's calculate the uh, net present value. Net present value of uh, the weighted average cash flows. So. So I discussed uh, the net present value and all other classical business feasibility indicators uh, in another video. So if you want to uh, uh, review again about the NPV and, and uh, more basic stuff, uh, please visit that video. Please watch that video again. So we'll find NPV. So rate is the cost of capital. So in our example, I want to make sure, let's check again. So the cost of capital is 10%, right? 10%. Okay. And then the value. So we block, uh, we block the values from uh, the first period to the last. Right? First period to the last, not from the initial investment, but from the first uh, cash inflow to the last, right? And then we okay. But now the result has to add the initial investment. Okay. So we get 461, so 4.61 million. So uh, according to the uh, you know, standard interpretation of uh, net present value, as the NPV is positive, then uh, this project is considered worthwhile uh, or feasible to be or to execute. Right? So uh, again, one, one more time, because the NPV, the NPV is positive, then uh, we could we could say we could uh, interpret that this business or this project uh, is worthwhile to undertake. Right? However, now you have uh, again you have a doubtful mind or you're not really convinced about the uh, the use of weighted average cash flows so maybe you are asking your uh, management right, or your uh, internal researchers and you're asking that although the bad scenario only has a chance of happening of 30 percent but that but it might happen right it might happen so uh, then you maybe you start calculating uh, it's it's uh, each scenario's NPV, right? So we can find out. Actually, we can make a copy and paste from here. But uh, let's do it one more time uh, again to show example also. So financial, the NPV, the cost of capital is ten percent. Then the value again we block from the first cash inflow to the last, not from the initial investment, okay? But then the result has to add the initial investment. 
sorry uh yeah so this uh yeah. let me repeat plus the initial investment okay so i make a, a copy and paste to the right side okay now you see uh it's very important fact to see that the uh if the bad scenario is prevalent uh or is the one that prevails then the npv would be minus 32 million so this again this project is not feasible right if the bad if the bad scenario does uh come to pass so now you, you start you're starting to uh doubt you know the uh npv produced from the weighted average cash flows right so as you're saying of course uh statistically this is like quite uh robust right and you see an a, a positive npv of 4.61 million uh but again you challenge your uh, uh top management or your researchers about the bad scenario so there's a possibility and the possibility is not that small right 30 percent chance that a bad scenario will uh will, will take place and uh that being the case the npv of your project would be minus 32 million so then you uh you tell the uh you tell your research team or your management to make uh, another alternative right uh maybe you have this in mind you have this idea what about if i uh uh, have another alternative uh, in which the project uh, would be delayed for whatever maybe one year right so you're saying that uh, you, you're saying to your management right so tell me what will happen if I, I wait for one year so whether uh, does the project will have a more NP, a more positive NPV or, or vice versa right or uh, if no, within one, within one year, right? Within uh, uh, the period that you are waiting, uh, if the NPV is not better, or if the even if the uh, or if the NPV worsens, then of course you have to abandon, uh, or you will not do it after that certain period. In in our case, one year. Okay, so let me maybe rephrase again my statement. So you tell your management. Uh, so I want I want I want you to make uh, another alternative for me. Uh, what if I could delay the project for one year? So tell me whether uh, the NPV improves or worsens or doesn't change at all. Then uh, then I will make uh, like a more informed decision, right? Okay. So now let's continue with. Uh, So our analysis, eh? Okay, so we'll see what will happen uh, if we delay it for one year, okay? So let's go the scenario. So we are currently here. Uh, the current position is right now, right? Time zero. Uh, but now in this scenario, in, in this alternative, we will not do anything right now. So we'll wait, right? We'll wait until uh, next year, right? So again, for the normal, normal scenario, we'll start investing next year, right? Time one, right? And then we'll get 30, right? 30. Okay, this is a normal scenario. Uh, again, the, the chance of happening is forty uh, percent, right? Forty percent for the for the excellent scenario. Uh, so again, we will incur seventy, and, uh, and then we'll get uh, forty-five. And this is what good scenario, right? And then for the bad scenario, 
Oh, so if the bad scenario, uh, you know, comes to pass or uh, is the one that happens next year, then of course we will abandon it, right? We will not do it. Okay, so this is a bad one. This I think this is the this is the beauty of the uh, real option application, right? So yeah, if you delay it for uh, one year, uh, of course you will execute the project only if uh, again the prevalent condition or scenario is normal or good. Right? So for the bad scenario, we'll abandon the project altogether. So let's recalculate again. Uh, so what will happen now? What what would be the NPVs or all the scenarios? Okay, and then we'll find the NPV for now. So be careful now. Uh, uh, the uh, the cash flow starts from year one, and we are uh, asking for the NPV right now. All right. Okay. So. Be careful with the denominator, okay? So for example, the first one, what would be the NPV? So we start from this one, right? The NPV for the normal, normal condition. So we minus 70 divided by, so because we have to uh, what, discount, discount it back, right? We have to discount it back one step, right? So one plus, uh, we can use the cost of capital Right or you see uh, our information here that we made up uh, for the initial investment. Actually, you could uh, you could choose to discount it back at the cost of capital or at the basic rate. Right? Maybe you're borrowing money instead of uh, you know using uh, the 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 the. the capital mix between debt and equity, but it's entirely uh, dependent upon the real situation, right, uh, in the real life. But uh, for the sake of example, to create a bit uh, complicated, you know, calculation, uh, I would choose the interest rate, right, the basic rate instead of the, the cost of capital, uh, only for the initial investment, right? And then plus, right, this one, right, 30, divided by one plus. Now we are using the cost of capital because now we start, uh, we start talking about the required return by investors, right? So to the power of how many, how many steps is it? Right? One and two, right? So to the power of two, and then this one, 30 divided by one plus 10%. How many steps? I suppose three steps, right? One, two, three, right? So to the power of three, and this one, one plus 10% to the power of four. Okay, and the, the, the process uh, uh, will proceed, right? Will will be similar for other scenarios. So let's do it in Excel. Uh, so now things change uh, a bit. Right? So now uh, we'll delay it for one year. Right? We'll look, it will look like this. But for the bad scenario, uh, if we wait for next year and the, the condition turns out to be bad, then of course, we will not do it. Okay, so as we calculate the NPV, now be careful. Uh, so I choose to do it like manually because we try to change the, uh, the I mean, the, the denominator is not, not uh, the same for all because we choose to, to use the basic rate as the discount factor for the initial investment. So we use the basic rate instead of uh, cost of ca capital. But for all the cash, for all the cash inflows, of course we use uh, the cost of capital. 
so this should equal what, uh, this one right divided by one plus again the basic rate six percent to the power of one again to the power of one why because it's one step move right? one step to the current position okay plus or just simply uh, uh, to the power of one or you you, uh, you can choose not to write anything there just the same okay? plus uh, this one right divided by one plus now the cost of capital right? to the power of two because uh, it involves like two movements or two steps right two step move plus uh, this one divided by one plus the, the cost of capital to the power of three right plus yeah this one divided by one plus the cost of capital to the power of four okay so uh then I can make a, a, a copy and paste mechanism again. Okay, so you see now the, the NP fee would look like this, right? The, uh, if we delay, right? And then uh, similar to the, the previous, uh, what's that? Uh, previous procedure, now we will calculate the uh, weighted average NP fee, right? So what is the expected? Or the the weighted average NPV. right? Or the expected value of the NPV. Right? It should be what should be. Okay. Right? The this. NPV, the normal NPV times its probability of happening, right? Plus the uh, excellent NPV multiplied by its probability of happening, plus plus the bad one, right? The bad, uh, which is zero, of course, because we will not do it if uh, one year from now the condition is bad. But we have to include into calculation, but it's zero anyway. So now, uh, let's reduce the decimals. Yeah. So now the uh, the NPV is expected to be eleven point forty two million. So if you compare it to the uh, the previous NPV, this is the NPV if you decide or the expected NPV or the weighted average NPV uh, if you decide to take on the project right now, right or to uh, you know to execute the business right now. Uh, however, if you if you choose to wait for one year, the expected NPV turns out to be eleven point forty two. So, which one would you choose? I think uh, a wise a wiser decision would be uh, to delay the decision for one year and and uh, see uh, what will really happen next year. Because again, the ex expected NPV uh, is estimated or is found to be bigger than than that uh, if you execute the project right now quite interesting right so you can apply yeah you can apply this uh this uh, concept or this technique to uh, any kind of uh decision making pertaining to you know uh project expansion uh maybe buying or acquiring another business or even contracting your business units right if you want to abandon or you want to sell uh, spin out any business unit of yours, then this kind of technique would really help you, right? To uh, to show you, you know, other alternatives or uh, other possibilities of uh, expected NPVs, right? If you wait for uh, for uh, certain periods, or even you want to, uh, maybe if you want to make it faster and something like that. Okay, so. Uh, Again, 
this has been the norm okay in the industry it's not uh something you know like uh, uh super special like like it was in the past but it's, it has been uh incorporated into any decision making in, in modern times especially if you see the uh, uh moments such as this right with the proliferation of uh financial technology firms uh with the young startups and you know other uh, uh possibilities right other forms of business okay so now uh uh then how much is the you know the worth or the value of uh the option right so it's quite interesting to know right what would be like the uh the value of the option uh, of you know like extending right okay so uh to value the option we have like a lot of uh approaches or a lot of methods right? you could use the binomial method because you, you could use other uh, uh, approaches as well uh, but today we choose to use the most common one uh, which is the black and skulls option pricing model right so uh, black and skulls uh, so they uh, again published the paper in 1973 that has since uh, become like a seminal paper and also uh, has been used by by the industry right and if you uh, know that the uh, 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 Myron Scholes right, uh, would later receive uh, the Nobel Prize uh, and also later he would establish a, a hedge fund named uh, the long-term capital management that, that of course finally went down as you know right in 1998 However, uh, uh, black, right? Uh, black passed away earlier, so uh, he did not receive any Nobel Prize because, again, the Nobel, Nobel Prize cannot be awarded uh, posthumously. So, so black never received uh, uh, the Nobel Prize, but we know that their contribution, uh, you know, is enormous, right? So. Again, Black uh, should have received the Nobel Prize as well. Right? Okay, so uh, uh, we'll use the Black and Skulls option pricing model. Uh, you, you can, uh, you can uh, pronounce it Skulls, right? as the uh, American would pronounce, or you can pronounce it as Scholes, maybe as uh, 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 French maybe would, would pronounce. Right? Okay, so uh, you see the formula. Okay, so uh, so value of value of the real option right would be the function of uh, now we need the p so p is the uh, you know the price right in the sense that this represents uh, you know the uh, the present value of its future cash flows right so. It's called price, but in this context, this represents uh, the present value of future cash flows, right? So this should be multiplied with uh, uh, the uh, the CDF, right? Cumulative distribution function uh, for the uh, uh, Gaussian or normal distribution, right? Uh, D1. Uh, we'll find out in a little one right? in a little while sorry minus uh this is known as the exercise price right? exercise price uh in this context would be the initial investment right the exercise or the strike price right? in this context this would be again the uh initial investment right? 
multiplied by e right, to the power of minus interest rate. Again, we have our basic rate to represent this, right, times t. t is the time. So in, in the, this context, it will be one year, right? One, right? Multiplied by the cumulative distribution function uh, of D2. Okay. So this is again the, the famous uh, equation for uh, for the Black and Scholes option pricing model. Okay, so uh, what would be the D1? How to estimate uh, D1? D1 would be the log, uh, of course, natural log, right? What, whenever we talk about log uh, in finance or economics, most likely we are talking about the natural log. Log of, uh, again, the uh, present value of future cash flows or the price, right? Divided by the uh, strike price, the exercise price, or the initial investment, right? Plus, so the basic rate, basic interest rate, plus the variance. This is the, the variance of, uh, and the variance of the uh, return, returns, variance of the returns of this project, right? So half, and then uh, multiplied by the time. What about D2? D2, uh, this, this could be estimated as a D1 minus uh, the standard deviation. Now this is the square root of variance, right? Multiplied by the square root of T. Okay, so now uh, let's go into the estimation. So uh, if you see the uh, the components here, uh, starting from D1, we, we have to find the P, right? So the P uh, has not been found, right? What else we have here? The X is known, right? We, in, in our context, this is 70 million, the X. So maybe we can write it down. Uh, the uh, X has been known, right? X is 70 million. And then the, what else? The R, the basic rate, uh, in our example, this is like the risk-free rate, 6%. six percent. Uh, what else do we know? T, T is one year, right? So uh, what components, uh, what components have not been uh, estimated here? Uh, P, right? P, not yet uh, estimated, and and the variance. Okay, so these two components. Uh, have to be estimated uh, to in order to solve or to find the uh, the value of value of this real option. Okay, so let's start from uh, the estimation of p. Uh, estimation of p. So again, p is the uh, the price, right? Price in the sense that this is the present value of uh, future cash flows that would be produced by uh, this project. Okay, right? so. Uh, now we draw again the Excel. But this time, uh, because this is not the, uh, not the decision tree like uh, we saw just minutes ago, okay. This is to estimate uh, present value of cash flows, right? Present value of cash flows for each scenario. So we will write it back. So this is like 15, right? 15. Sorry. Uh, okay, so. This would be the case again if we delay uh, again we, we delay the project for one year, and 
again, going back to here, you see the definition here. This, the price, the P, is the present value of future cash flows. The present value of future cash flows, not the net present value. So we will not in uh we will not enforce the initial investment. Okay, so we will uh, we'll just uh delete all of them, right? Because again, we are we are uh, we are going to estimate the present value of future cash flows for each scenario. So we will not enforce the initial investment because we are not looking for the net present value, but uh, uh, we are going to project the the present value of future cash flows. Okay, so uh, now have to be careful because we want to make a, a projection here in year one. Okay, not uh, not the present value right now. Right. Okay. Uh, Or uh, actually, yeah, we could we could find the present value right now. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so we'll just do the uh, manual calculation. Okay, so this would be uh, the like thirty. This one, right? Divided by one plus uh, the cost of capital in our story, ten percent right? so to the power of how many movement is it from here to uh, our current position? Right? This is one and two, right? So to the power of uh, two, right? Plus second one. Divide it by one plus uh, cost of capital to the power of three. Why three? Because we have uh, three steps right, to go back to the current situation because we are looking for the present value uh, as of today. Right? Plus this one uh, divided by one plus 10% to the power of uh, four. Okay. So 67.82, that's the present value of future cash flows for uh, the normal scenario. So we'll make a copy and paste mechanism for all other scenarios. Okay. And then uh, we'll find the Of the present value, okay. So this would be, and the sixty-seven point eighty-two multiplied by uh, the probability of happening, right? Plus uh, for the good scenario, times its chance, plus uh, the bad scenario, times also its probability of happening. Okay, so we find uh, the expected or the weighted average uh, weighted average present value is sixty seven point eighty two. So we have solved this one. Okay, we have solved this one. This turns out to be uh, sixty seven point eighty two. Okay, so quite quite uh, straightforward. Again, the price here. In this context, refers to the present value of future cash flows, right? For for uh, every scenario, and then we find the uh, can the expected value or the weighted average of uh, the present values. So we get uh, sixty seven point eighty two.
Yeah, I hope it's quite clear up to this point. Uh, we, have, we have seen the uh, estimation of the P, yeah, the, the, the price or the present value of future cash flows. And we have one more uh, component to estimate before we pull all, put all of the, the components into the Black and Scholes option pricing model. Okay, let's go back to the screen. Okay, so uh, the variance, so the other component, the, this one, right, the variance, uh, the variance refers to the variance of the project's returns, right? And uh, from the previous research in, in, uh, in the investment field, in the market microstructure and uh, some other financial economics uh, fields, we know that the probability distribution for returns is most likely log normal, right? log normal. So uh, then based on the fact, right, the, the previous findings, uh, so we are going to estimate uh, the variance as a function of the log value of the coefficient of variation square right, plus one divided by the t. Right? Of course, we know that in, in our uh, story, the t is one year. Uh, so now we have to find out, or we, we have to try to uh, estimate the coefficient of variation. Right? Coefficient of variation. So let's go into the estimation. Okay, so uh, to estimate the coefficient of variation, uh, so we need the uh, expected present value again, expected present value, and also the variance of the present value. Okay, so uh, we'll copy maybe from here. Okay, so uh, again, the uh, future cash flows for all scenarios are here. And uh, again, we have to estimate the uh, expected present value. So expected present value is derived from uh, the present values of all scenarios. So we, first we have, we have to find, uh, again, the present value of the future cash flows for each uh, scenario. But uh, this is a difference from, from uh, the previous estimation, uh, which was for the P. So this time, uh, the present value that we are going to estimate is the present value at year one, uh, the present value of year one. Uh, the previous uh, calculation, uh, so we, we did the calculation for present value uh, at year zero or at the uh, current current position or, or uh, right now, right? So there's a difference. So for the, uh, for the calculation of the coefficient of variation, firstly, we have to find the present value for each scenario at year one. So here, uh, year one, so it should be here, right? So the first cash flow, 30, divided by one plus the cost of capital, now to the power of one, right? One, because it's from uh, year two to year one, right? Plus the second one, second cash flow, divided by one plus the cost of capital uh, to the power of two, right? From uh, year three to year one, right? So two steps, right? plus uh, this cash flow, right? Divided by one plus the cost of capital to the power of three, right? Three steps uh, to uh, arrive at year one, right? So it's a mistake. Uh, so 
Let me check again. Yeah, should be correct. Oh, this one doesn't have, yeah. Okay. We have uh, one extra bracket, unnecessary bracket. Okay. So 70, 74.61 for the normal scenario. Then I'll make a copy paste. All right. Copy paste. Uh, all right. Okay. So now we get uh, the present value. The present values for all uh, cash flows over here, okay, uh, and then we, but this is present value at year one, right? At year one position. Okay, so we can find again the expected uh present value right the, the weighted average right this one times its probability plus uh, the good scenario time its chance of happening plus the the bad scenario times its uh probability of happening right okay so 74.61 right that's the uh, expected present value at year one, right? at year one. Uh, so based on uh, this finding, right, the uh, expected value or the weighted average, then we can find the uh, standard deviation, right? So the sigma or standard deviation. So I will just, uh, just yeah, standard deviation of the standard deviation of the uh, present values, right? Of the present values. So this is the average value. And we have three uh, values uh, from three scenarios. So we can, uh, yeah, I mean, we have to do it one by one. We have, because we have, we have probability. So we cannot use the formula like uh, in Excel, like STDEV or something. But we have to do it yeah, rather manually. Uh, so the first one, let me make sure, right. the first one minus the average, or oh, maybe we can do it uh, this way. So the first cell is this one, the first uh, person value from the normal scenario minus uh, the average value, and then we square it. Right, we square it and then uh, times its probability. Okay, so one more time. The uh, first present value minus uh, the, the weighted average or the expected uh, present value, right? And then we square it and then we times the uh, probability. Right, and we do the same thing here. Okay. Oh. Well, maybe two decimals, okay. Okay, and then uh, then we sum them together. We sum them together and we will get a variance this is the variance right you see uh, the we add them together right? so again each of them would be for example the second one this would be 111 minus oh sorry uh i forget to lock i have to lock this one make sure right because uh the expected present value doesn't uh, doesn't have any, you know, any cell afterward. 
So when we make a copy and paste, uh, 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 have to be careful because again, we have to, so we have to lock this one. Okay, so we'll make a copy and paste again. Let me check again the, okay. Yep, and then this one. Okay, so uh, this is the variance and then the uh, standard deviation. Standard deviation of the present value should be the square root of this. Okay. Too many decimals. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so uh, with this uh, calculation, this estimation, we get uh, the expected present value of seventy four point sixty one. And the standard deviation of the present values uh, is 28.89. So the coefficient of variation and coefficient of variation is uh, the standard deviation divided by the expected value. Okay, so we get, uh, what is it? 3.0.39, okay? Again, uh, I have to be careful here. The, uh, the present value, uh, present value estimates are all uh, for year one, right? Year one. Okay, so we get uh, again the coefficient of variation of zero point thirty nine. So. We got we got this right. Uh, so the log of zero point thirty nine square right, plus one divided by uh, the time, and in our context, the time is one. Right, the uh, one. Right. Okay, so. Uh, do it log. Uh, this one square. Okay, to make sure. Oop. Uh, this is lock. Uh, okay, plus one. Hmm, maybe this is more appropriate. So lock here divided by one. The time is one, right? Or if you just want to, uh, if you want to make sure that the uh, rounding is uh, more accurate. Maybe you can do this at right? the square here. So it's 0 0.15. So lock this uh, coefficient of variation square. So one point, yeah, just the same, right? One point, uh, 0 0.140. Uh, 
right? 0 0.14. Okay, so we get uh, this one, so 0 0.14, right? That's the, 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 the last component that we need for the Blake and Skull's uh, option pricing model. Okay, so now we can put all uh, the numbers together to this formula, right? So you can try by yourself. Uh, okay, so the D one would be, so the log, log value of, uh, what is our uh, uh, P? 67.82 right, divided by the uh, exercise price in our context uh, 70 right okay plus the basic rate basic interest rate uh, six percent plus uh, the what is our variance again? Zero point fourteen. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, divided by two. Sorry, divided by two. Uh, times. Uh, the time, right? Uh, the time is one year, right? Now, example here. Okay. So for your exercise, uh, yeah, please try to find it, right? Try to find it, okay? And uh, D2 would be uh, D1 again, minus uh, the, be careful now, this is the standard deviation or the square root of square root of the variance, right, times uh, the square root of t, right? Okay, let's check again. Yep, d1 minus the standard deviation multiplied by uh, the uh, square root of t. So as we know here, the standard deviation would be the square root of the variance, and our variance is 0 0.14, okay, 0 0.14. The square root of it, right? the, the standard deviation is uh, the square root of variance times uh, the square root of time, right? which is one. Okay, so first we have to find the uh, D1 and D2, okay. Okay, so D1, uh, so the log value of 62, so 67.82 divided by uh, 70, okay, plus uh, 6% times 0 0.14, right, the, the variance, uh, divided by two. Okay, then multiplied by time. Okay, so just to make sure Okay, uh, sorry, not yet done. Uh, okay, this is the, the numerator. 
and the denominator would be uh, so actually it's not done okay so we should divide by uh, the square root of the variance so square root of 0 0.14 at times the square root of time okay so the denominator is uh, again the square root of right uh, times right the square root of one okay so this is the this is a numerator and uh, this is the denominator so the uh, d1 would be the numerator divided by the denominator okay so we find uh, what is it uh, yeah okay. maybe four uh, decimals because later we, we have to put into the uh, uh, cumulative distribution function right so what about d2 so d2 again is d1 minus the square root of the variance multiplied by the the uh, square root of time right? d1 minus right, the square root of uh, 14 times the square root of square root of time. Let's check again. So d1 minus uh, the square root of variance times the square root of time. Because we get minus 0 0.11, uh, maybe 13. Okay. okay. So we we got d1 and d2. Then we put into here Right, the value value would be uh, p p our p uh, again the present value of future cash flows is at sixty seven eighty two right multiplied by now we have to find this one right the uh, cumulative distribution function of uh, d one what is our d one again oh we can immediately do it right the this one, what is the, the cumulative distribution function with a normal distribution? Right? So we use norm as this, norm uh, as this, right, of this. So we get uh, um, 0 0.60. Three seven. Okay, so we write it down here. Okay. Yeah, minus. What's the x? The strike price at seventy. Right, times uh, e right, to the power of uh, minus what is the basic rate at six percent times uh, the t t is one right, uh, multiplied by the cumulative distribution function of d2. So the norm as this of this one. So five four five five seven. Four five five seven. Okay, so So we are almost done. Okay.
Okay, so maybe if you you, know, you want to try to find it by yourself also. Uh, let's calculate. Find it. Okay, so what is the uh, failure of E here? Okay, so uh, usually we believe that the E represents a, a constant at 2.72, right? Or if you want to be more uh, accurate with four decimals, so E is 2.71. And then uh, eight three, right? Okay, two point seventy two, but to make a more complete form, at two point seven one eight three. So let's calculate uh, in Excel. So the first part is this one. What is it again? Uh, yep. Multiplied by the cumulative distribution function of D1. Right. And then minus uh, Okay, the what's that? Our strike price, right? Strike price uh, times the, uh, e, e here times e. E again is uh, two point seven one eight three. Okay. 2.71183, right? Uh, tie, uh, to the power of, yeah, fully, uh, to the power of, uh, what's that? Minus 6% times one. So, uh, okay, of course, anything mu multiplied by one would be uh, the same thing. So minus 6%, uh, so to the power of minus, Six percent. Okay, and then uh, multiplied by multiplied by the uh, cumulative distribution function of D two, D two right here. This one. Okay, so to make sure that we give. Other uh, two brackets. Okay, so we get uh, what do we get here? Ten point, yeah. So ten point uh, ninety million. So this is the value of the value of the real option. So the value of the real option is uh almost eleven million, right? Ten point nine million. So it's uh very valuable. So you see, even from uh, a simple example such as this. I think we can really treasure uh, uh, the contribution and the function of real option. So we are really grateful uh, to you know, the uh, finance scholars, finance and economics scholars, right? the, uh, the founding fathers of the option pricing theory, right? like uh, Black and Scholes, Paul Samuelson, Bachelier, and some other uh, experts uh, from the past and also uh, until the, the current generation. Okay. Uh, I think that's all uh, for today, right? It's a quite in, uh, intensive you know, uh, scenario making and also estimation. And I hope you enjoy uh, the, the, the steps that we we took right, to show you, uh, you know, the benefit of the benefit and importance of 
applying the real option concept in uh, uh, project taking right, or uh, business unit or project execution. So thank you very much and uh, see you again soon in uh, another topic discussion. Bye.